Hi, Scott Grove here from Easy Inlay. In this episode, I want to show you how to hand cut uh, strips of the abalone from a sheet. We do offer a variety of colors in pre-cut strips, and these measure 3.8 millimeters, and they're gauged to fit in our pre-channeled wooden and ceramic rings. There might be a case you want to cut your own strips or at a different width. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Obviously, the first thing you're going to need is a sheet of our abalone, but you're going to need a good cutting surface also. I like these self-healing cutting mats, but if you don't have that, a sheet of MDF will work, um, or even hardboard. Uh, certainly don't cut on a bumpy bench or a piece of hardwood where the grain may divert your cut. Second is you're going to need a good straight edge. Now, I prefer to have a straight edge that doesn't have any sort of backing, because when you use this type of straight edge, the actual cutting edge is raised off the surface. Can you see that there? And that also can divert your, your, your cut. Your, your blade can sort of wander underneath that. So I don't like uh, an edge like this. Certainly you can use something like this, but you want to turn it over. You can use a square. But remember, you want to make sure that it's straight. That's really important to test that first. To test the straight edge, now I'm not testing if it's square, I'm just testing if this edge is straight. I would certainly hold it down. I like to use a utility knife, make a score line there, and then flip my knife over and sort of take a look at that. You can certainly um, use the knife to feel if it's lined up and certainly look along there. In addition, you can slide this over and make another cut right next to it. And you can see if these lines are parallel. If they're not, if it's not straight, it'll slightly be concave or convex, and you'll easily be able to see that. In this case, I'm pretty good. But quite frankly, what I often use is just a piece of MDF. This is half inch or three quarter MDF. Works really great. Gives you plenty of surface area for your knife to sort of stay uh, perpendicular to the cut. In addition, it's readily available. What I do like to do, though, is after I make sure that this is straight, I usually run over my joiner, or you can do a, a, a flat table with some sandpaper. I will take this and sort of firm up that edge. I take a little CA glue, thin CA glue, and give a coat on this surface. And that a nice healthy coat will soak in. It'll soak in and really consolidate those fibers. I don't usually like to spray it with the accelerator because the accelerator can boil that CA, although the glue boots won't. But if you're using another type brand of CA, don't use the accelerator because it, it can certainly uh, boil it and make it a rough surface. I just let this naturally cure, it won't take long, and it'll consolidate those fibers. After the CA cures, I'll hit it with some fine sandpaper just to smooth down any fibers that may have been raised. And now I have a nice sort of tempered surface, really hard, and it's great uh, as a straight edge. Next, you're gonna need a good cutting knife. I like to use these knives that have the breakaway uh, tips so you can snap off the end and get a new fresh edge, or you can use a, an X-Acto knife. Either will work. I actually like these larger ones better. Another thing that I like to do is add a little uh, sort of gription. <laughs> It's a made up word on the back of these. So when you're pressing this down onto your uh, power shell, there's no chance of it sliding around. I'll simply take some PSA, pressure sensitive adhesive. I'll put a piece on here, flip that over, cut that flush, move it down to the other side. Cut off the excess, make sure that's on real good. Now I have a nice cutting straight edge and this won't slide when I'm trying to hold it down. So those are the three basic components for, for cutting, but now how do I measure the, the width? Um, I could certainly do this by eye, but it's really important in most cases that this is a perfectly parallel strip. I could simply measure it, although I do like to use uh, sort of calipers so in this case, I'm going to set it to, say, six millimeters. That's about a quarter inch. I do like to work in millimeters. It's a smaller increment, and I don't know, the math is just a little easier. And this can be futzy when you're doing it with a camera. And I guess that's close enough, and I'll lock that in place. 
I'll now use the end, this sort of uh, little protruding uh, measuring device, because that also is six millimeters to, to mark my straight edge. I'll line the end of the caliper, butting it to the, butting it to the sheet of power shell and simply slide this up against it. Again, make sure you check both sides a couple times and make sure you're perfectly parallel. After that, it's pretty straightforward. I take my utility knife and I'll make a few light cuts first. Don't try to muscle your way all the way through because you can crack. I mean, this is a shell. So I will use a low angle. I won't go high. I'll use a low angle and I'll just score a couple light coats, increasing the pressure. And after three or four passes, you got yourself your strip. You can certainly go ahead and check that. And I'm right on. Now, if you're doing multiple cuts and you want to kind of go into production, there's a faster way. You can go ahead and make a gauged uh, measuring device, if you will. So the way I do that is I start with two strips of eighth inch hardboard. You can use quarter inch hardboard or MDF. You can go thicker, but I typically like to go uh, keep it thin. The thickness really doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and use my calipers and set these at my quarter inch thickness. One thing that I found that's a little easier is hang this piece off the bench. Then you can kind of clamp that in place. That makes it a little easier so you can kind of uh, work one, at a, one end at a time. You can also use these kind of paper clips. And again, go back and make sure you check both sides. At this point, what I'll do is then I'll flip it over and I'll put a little CA glue on this seam right here. Here I now can use some accelerator. And that will now glue these two pieces together. And I have an offset of exactly six millimeters. So now I can use this to go into production. I take my offset edge, lay it down and slide that sheet so it hits the underside edge. I take my straight edge, line that up and take this off. And now I've got this overhang exactly at six millimeters to make my cut. Again, a few light cuts. And I can rinse and repeat. It never hurts to double check your measurements. And I'm actually just a hair over there. So what do you do when it's just a hair over? So now you have this template and the fact that these are parallel edges, I can actually go over to the table saw and, and slice a hair off or maybe go to the joiner or just some sandpaper, but it's an easy way to sort of reduce that, uh, reduce that cut. Obviously if it's too small, you'll have to make another one and make it a little bigger, but these are really great. And once you have them done, go ahead and mark them. And after you've made this once, you won't have to do it again. And after a while, you get a collection of these and collect them and trade them with your friends. So I hope that helps in showing you how to cut your own strips of PowerShell. And remember, easy inlay makes inlay easy. Thanks for watching. See you next time.